Uh, bowling today is quite a bit different than it was 25 years ago. Uh, it's basically in, in, in two parts. On the, on the competitive level, uh, as in the PBA Tour and another competitive event, uh, it's a lot harder to be successful than, than it was years ago. There's a lot more that goes into the game, lane patterns, uh, ball layouts, different cores, different covers. Uh, but on a, on a league level, it's, it's a lot easier uh, than, it, than it used to be. Um, you know, it, 25 years ago, you know, 300 was a, a, a premium, and now it's, you know, it seems like nobody even stops to watch anybody bowl 300. Uh, averaging 240, 230 is something that, that's the norm, and it's, it's sad. I think I do think people will bowl, will bowl a lot less because of the easy lane conditions. The, the, the challenge in the game uh, isn't there anymore. I fell in love with bowling uh, because as a kid I, I, I wanted to be like my, my dad and my, and my grandfather uh, and they bowled, they bowled three four nights a week. They were always in the bowling center and they, you know, they brought me along. Uh, you know, and that's how I fell in love with the game. I wanted to be just like them, and, and uh, you know, here I am today. What matters to me most about bowling uh, is the challenge that is involved in, in, in the game. Uh, every day I have to learn something new, and, and I have to get better at it. And, and that, that strives me to, to keep working and to, to practice harder and to keep my mind open to new things. You know, the, 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 the trend of people not, not bowling because lanes are going to be easy is, is going to be tough to change uh, because people um, are so used to averaging uh, a certain amount and their, and their egos uh, have gotten in the way of the, of the sport. Uh, I think it's something that's going gonna, gonna to be a slow and, and long process, but um, it, it needs to change and, it, and, and there needs to be a, something done about, about the lane conditions these days. There, there, there has to be something that, that, that we can do to, to, to let people know that um, the sport is in, is in danger and if people keep uh, averaging 230 and 240 uh, that, that the sport is going to evaporate at a, at a league level and uh, unless it goes back to some form of a, of a challenge you know we're all going to be we're all going to be hurt here in 10 15 years. You know, people have such a, a false sense of, of, of how good they are, and you know, they a lot of guys that are, you know, bowling league and they're averaging really high. They think that they're that they're better than the pros because on tour, you know, a, a good average for a year is, is 220, 222, and the guys at home are averaging 15 pence higher than us, and they think that they're that they're better than us because of what their average is, and, and it's just it's so not true. And we see it every year on tour when people come out and bowl the World Series bowling and the U.S. Open, and they come out and they and they're their best guy in the league. They average 240, and they can't bowl a 200 game out here. So I think that um, you know people need to pay attention a little bit more and need to be educated a little more about the game. You know, I I, I don't agree with putting colored oil out there. You know, only only maybe for TV purposes. Um, I think if you if you put it out there and people can see it while they're bowling, it makes it actually does make it a little bit easier. Uh, to see, but uh, you know, as far as TV, if they could come out with with something that just showed up on TV to show the people at home, you know, what it is that we're actually actually bowling on, that that would be beneficial. Even even though you post what the lane pattern is and and, and how you know the length, it, there's still a lot more that goes into how you play the lanes. Um, so yeah, I think it should be. Um, it should be posted what, what, what the lane pattern is. When, when, you, when you go to a, a golf course, they tell you exactly how many yards the course is. You don't have to figure it out. You're not, you're not guessing how long a certain hole is. So you know, why should it be any different in our sport? We should have some sort of, of idea of what we're getting ourselves into. Uh, plain and simple, the, the hammer balls are the best balls in the market. Um, and I think it's, my career has, has proven that. I didn't have any uh, PBA titles until I signed with Hammer. Now I have, I have three titles and, and I have a U.S. Open title and um, I compete in every single event. I think that the, the, you know, the, the proof of the balls is just is in my performance.
to me, when I, when I put it on, it's just it's it's loyalty, and that's and that's what I see from Hammer, and that's what I've seen in the past, um, you know, two and a half years that I that I've been on staff, and you know, it, if it was up to me, I I would retire as a as a Hammer player. My, my fondest memory uh, as, a, as a kid uh, growing up on was uh, I bowled a doubles league with, with my brother uh, and I was 15 and he was uh, 12 at the time and uh, one game we bowled, we bowled 596 uh, as a doubles team and um, unfortunately for him he was the one that got six in the last ball and I think that attributed him to him quitting bowling uh, because I, I outshined him. <laughs> but uh, that, that, that is my fondest memory and, and being able to share that with, with my brother is something I'll never forget. Uh, the first hammer balls that, that I ever had was the uh, was the, the uh, purple 3D offset and the uh, the purple nail were the first couple of balls that I remember from, from the hammer brand and, and uh, you know when I was 15 16 years old those are the, basically the only balls I used. I think as a as a kid I, I really I liked the, the hammer logo on the side of the ball and I I knew what that what that brand stood for. And you know it was it had such a rich uh, history that I think uh, you know watching everybody around me throw hammer products, I figured these balls got to be got to be better than everybody else. Uh, that system makes way more sense than the, than the standard handicap. Uh, I think I've, I've been saying it for, for years that, that there needs to be some sort of, of way to, to uh, rate people on what they're bowling on just so they have, have an idea, you know, and if that goes with uh, making certain leagues that way to where they're, you know, if you do it in tiers or whatever it needs, needs to happen, I think that uh, a different handicap and rating system needs to, needs to happen. Yeah, it would make for uh, a lot more competitive uh, ha handicap events. Um, you know, in, in a, a true sense of a handicap event. Um, you know, there's there, there's a lot of a lot of guys out there with, with super inflated averages, and they actually should be getting pins when they go, when they go to events. And you know, that might discourage them from, from from bowling events because they're bowling against guys who are a lot better than them, but their averages are actually the same. The current handicap system is not a measurement at all of the skilled player. I mean, if they they came out on tour and they based the handicap on 230, and uh, you know someone out here was averaging 215, and they were bowling someone at home who was averaging 230, and now that guy's given the tour player pins, you know, it's just, it's it's totally unfair. Yeah, definitely, there'd be a ton missing in my life. I. Uh, I, I love the sport. I love the, the competitiveness. I love everything about it. I love, you know, throwing a, a strike when I need it. All of it adds up to, to you know, just tremendous love for the game.